ones. If you have not heard anything from your loved ones, rest assured nothing tragic is happening to them. We can safely presume that everything is okay if we don't care from each other. Oftentimes it would take a tragedy, a misfortune, before our loved ones will communicate with us. It would seem that if everything is alright, this is not considered newsworthy or not even newsworthy at all. If we observe through the media, print or broadcast media, the print media will sensationalize it in their headlines. Radio and TV newscasters are trained to raise the decibels of their speaking voices to agitate their viewers and listeners. If every day, day in and day out, morning and afternoon, we read the papers and listen to the broadcast with all the bad news, you will soon get the impression that it's only the bad news that is happening around us you will form the opinion that it is evil that is regnant. That evil has the upper hand, hence every time good things happen to us, we could hardly believe and say, ah, it's too good to be true. Every good event, therefore, should be met with suspicions and disbelief. It is the same mindset that evil is regnant, that the news of the resurrection is not welcome or accepted by his disciples and followers. The Gospel mentioned God's apparition to Mary Magdalene. Mary's anxiety and consternation are natural. She comes to the tomb early for a time of grieving, for beginning this slow and painful process of trying to greet the absence of the one she deeply loves. But the removal of the stone and the empty tomb disrupt and created fear. Her conclusion, like anyone else, living in a world of cause and effect, the body must have been stolen. It did not occur to her in her grief that Jesus attached to his prediction of passion and death that on the third day he will rise again. The gospel mentioned that they did not understand the sacred scripture yet. Jesus, in his preaching, publicly proclaimed the bad news of his suffering and death, but immediately concluded it with the good news of his resurrection. Today we are on the Easter season. From this moment on, nothing will be the same. All things will be measured by this event of the resurrection of Jesus, that love has triumphed over death, as the ordering power of reality. That death has no more dominion over human life and consciousness except as an illusion. Satan is that dehumanizing force who encourages that illusion to convince us that we are not free. The person who lives under the illusion of the dominion of death, who believes that death has the last word, he lives fearfully, greedily, impulsively and violently in a climate of isolation and despair. On the other hand, if we believe in the resurrection, all fears will be wiped away. We can now love unto death and offer our life for others. Prior to the resurrection, most certainly, there was a reason to fear, but the reason had vanished Dead. There was no more reason to fear under love's dominion that the nature of God and the nature of life in God has been defined once and for all. All safety from this time forth would be in love. Paul says that our faith would have been in vain had not Christ been raised from the dead. Easter is the core event of the Christian faith. What does faith in the resurrection mean? The person who lives under the illusion of the dominion of death lives fearfully in a brutalizing present with no hope for completion in the future. The way media reports events reinforces this illusion that only evil things happen. Murder, threats of war, 
corruption scandals. The current pandemic is deeply rooted in the philosophy of fear rather than promotion of life. Do not be surprised that the government's strategy is to mobilize the military forces to reinforce that fear. We not only have to wear masks, to wash our hands, and watch social distancing, but we should also emphasize that we should boost our immunity towards a healthy lifestyle, eating the right food, proper exercise, and a present sleep and harmonious relationship with each other. One does not observe these protocols, not so much to get infected, but not to infect others. To believe in this resurrection is not only a hope for a life hereafter. Although it is an integral part of Easter, Easter is not simply a metaphor for annual rebirth in nature. It is not about some vision of eternal return like flowers and birds returning in springtime. No, it's not even about survival in a certain sense that people survive in their children, achievements, and legacy. There's much more in the resurrection faith. Hope in the resurrection means an entirely new life in Christ, in the here and now. Yes, in the here and now, and not thereafter. Why? Because the old life of the old self who lives that evil as the upper can, and that as the final say in life, will live selfishly defending his life against death with a life of accumulation, greed, and isolation. Conversely, new life in the risen Christ means we are willing to lay down our life for others, knowing that death has been overcome, that the walls that separate us from each other have been broken. We can now love unconditionally without fear of losing ourselves. New life in Jesus means going beyond fulfilling Sunday obligations, fidelity to our personal prayer life. New life in Jesus means going beyond a negative spirituality of not doing harm to others, like managing our anger, disciplining our appetites, or controlling our lustful thoughts. It means reaching out to others, leaving our comfort zone, it means walking an extra mile for them. It means understanding someone who always gives us a hard time. New life in Jesus means an entirely new paradigm, which is that the love of God is stronger than death. Therefore, we can love unto them. This new paradigm takes the form of sacrifice, service and sharing. Sacrifice because we are able to bear the pain that love entails, fully aware that a part of ourselves dies in the process of loving. Service because anything we do is motivated by the good of the other, expecting nothing in return as the good deed is its own reward. Sharing because we believe that in giving we do not lose something. On the contrary, we receive the honor and privilege of being God-like with our generosity. This life of sacrifice, sharing, and service finds its litmus test if the poor are the recipients. New life, therefore, takes on the form of solidarity in the poor's conquest for justice and liberation. Belief in the resurrection reaches its zenith in a love for the poor, not the abstract poor out there, but the poor within our own household. Rejoice, the Lord is risen, death has been overcome, love has triumphed. God is alive, I saw him.